Monkey and the Crocodile Long ago, there lived a monkey on a tree by the side of a river. The tree was always full of fruits which were sweet as nectar. The monkey used to eat fruits from the tree. Once a crocodile came off the waters and took rest on the tree on which the monkey lived. Monkey who was sitting high on branch saw the crocodile taking rest under a tree. Since he had no friends, he wanted to make friends with him. Said, Are you taking rest under the tree? You are my guest and it's my duty to offer you food. The monkey gave a lot of fruits to the crocodile to eat. The crocodile ate them all. He thanked the monkey for his generosity and went home. Crocodile started coming ashore every day and enjoyed the fruits offered by the monkey. Soon they became friends. One day, the crocodile asked the monkey for some fruits to take for his wife. The monkey happily gave the fruits to the crocodile. The crocodile took the fruits cheerfully to his wife and narrated the whole story to her. After eating the fruits, the crocodile's wife was overjoyed and said to her husband, Dear, eat these fruits must be ten times tastier. Why didn't you bring the heart of this monkey? The crocodile was stunned to hear such words from his wife. He replied, Sweetheart, the monkey is my friend. It would not be fair to take his heart. The crocodile's wife was shrewd and pleaded with her husband to bring monkey's heart for her. The crocodile was left with no other option but to bring monkey's heart for his wife. He was afraid that how could he ask for such a thing from his friend. Crocodile asked the monkey in a sad tone, My wife and I invite you to our home for dinner. My wife is very angry with me for not having invited you earlier. Poor monkey didn't know about the plan. He asked the crocodile, I accept your invitation, but how will I go with you? I don't know how to swim. The crocodile replied, Don't worry, come and sit on my back. I'll take you to my house. The monkey happily sat on the back of the crocodile and they started their journey. The crocodile entered in deep waters with intention to kill the monkey. The monkey got scared and asked the crocodile to move slowly. The crocodile thought now he could reveal his real intentions to the monkey. The crocodile said to the monkey, I am taking you to my home to please my wife. She wants to eat your heart. The monkey was taken aback to hear these words and said wittingly, Oh dear, why don't you tell me this earlier? It would be my privilege to offer heart to your charming wife. I usually keep my heart safely in the burrow of a tree. In order to serve my heart to your wife, I have to go back to get my heart. The foolish crocodile quickly then swam back to tree where the monkey lived. On reaching the bank, the monkey quickly jumped off the crocodile's back and climbed up his tree. The crocodile impatiently asked, what is the delay? Get your heart. My wife will be very happy. The monkey laughed and answered, My dear foolish friend, you have deceived me as a friend. Can anyone take out his heart and keep that in a burrow? It was all a trick to save my life and teach a lesson to an unfaithful friend like you. Now go away and don't ever come back. The crocodile was ashamed of his act and went home with his head bent down. Moral of the story, at times presence of mind pays well. Fox and Goat Once a fox was roaming around in the dark Fortunately, he fell into a well. He tried his devil best to come out of it, but all in vain. So he had no other alternative. But to remain there until the next morning. The next day, a goat came that way. She peeped into the well 
and saw the fox there. The goat asked, What are you doing there, Mr. Fox? The sly fox replied, I came here to drink water. It is the best I have ever tasted. Without thinking even for a while, the goat jumped into the well, quenched her thirst and looked away to get out. But just like the fox, she also found herself helpless to come out. Then the fox said, I have no idea. You stand on your hind legs. I'll climb on your head and get out. Then I shall help you to come out. The goat was innocent enough to understand the shrewdness of the fox and did as the fox said and helped him get out of the well. While walking away, the fox said, Had you been intelligent enough, you would never have gotten without seeing how to get out. Moral of the story Look before you leave. Do not just blindly walk into anything without thinking. Never step into mindless quarrels. Once upon a time there was a small village. Ram lived in that village. Ram has one day gone for a walk. As Ram was enjoying the walk, it came across a bridge. There was a small bridge to cross the stream. As Ram started climbing the bridge, he saw another ram on the other side of the bridge. Hey you! Only one can cross this bridge at a time. I will cross the bridge. If you wait for a moment, stay where you are. Yeah, it's true that only one can walk across the bridge. So you should step aside and let me cross the bridge. I will be there in a moment. I came here first and I should take a chance to walk over the bridge shouted the first ram. The bridge was built by my friends and I have the right to cross the bridge, replied the second ram. Both rams argued for a long time, but none of them is ready to step back. So the first ram grew angry and walked over the bridge. And why would the second ram keep quiet? The second ram too has stepped over the bridge. Both ram came face to face each other over the middle of the bridge. And there is no room for anyone to step aside. So both of them began to fight. Both the rams fell into stream and got drowned in the water. The repent that their stupid quarrel has led to the death. But it was too late. Clever Cock Long ago there was a village named Gavallapelam. A clever cock lived in that village. One day the cock fell in the eyes of a fox. Fox licked its mouth at the sight of a fat cock. He decided to eat it at any cost. The cock saw the fox and climbed a tree to save its life. But the fox had his own plans to eat the cock. It slowly reached the tree. Hi friend, yesterday night the god appeared in my dream. Do you want to know what he said to me in the dream? said the fox. The cock is clever. Wow! You are really lucky to see the god. 
The god must have appeared to you as you are a noble fox. What did the god say to you? Well, the god has said that all the animals, birds should hereby live together. He ordered that nobody should harm other creatures. I have decided to follow his order. I want to be friendly with you. If you come down, we shall go for a walk," said the fox. The cock is clever indeed. It understood the plan behind the sweet words of fox. Ah, it would be wonderful if we lived together. I will surely come for a walk with you. But just wait for a moment. I can see some hounds coming this way. Let us take those hounds too for a walk. The fox got terrified at the words of hounds. Oh, I am sure whether the hounds knew about my dream. We can go for a walk later," said the fox and ran for its life. The cock came down the tree and laughed at the sight of running fox. Elephant and friends. One day an elephant wandered into the forest in search of friends. He saw a monkey on a tree. Will you be my friend? asked the elephant. Replied the monkey, You are too big. You cannot swing from trees to trees like me. Next, the elephant met a rabbit. He asked him to be his friends. But the rabbit said, You are too big to play in my burrow. The elephant met a frog. Will you be my friend? He asked. How can I? Asked the frog. You are too big to leap about like me. The elephant was upset. He met a fox next. Will you be my friend? He asked the fox. The fox said, Sorry, sir, you are too big. The next day, the elephant saw all the animals in the forest running for their lives. The elephant asked them what the matter was. The bear replied, There is a lion in the forest. He is trying to gobble us up. The animals ran away to hide. The elephant wondered what he could do to save everyone in the forest. Meanwhile, the lion kept eating up whoever he could find. The elephant walked up to the lion and said, Please, Mr. King, do not eat up these poor animals. Mind your language, growled the lion. 
the elephant has no chance but to give the lion a hefty kick. The frightened lion ran for his life. The elephant ambled back in the forest to announce the good news to everyone. All the animals thanked the elephant. They said, You are just the right size to be our friend. True Wealth Once upon a time, there were two friends named Hari and Ravi. They both lived in Saint Street. Hari is very rich. He has all kinds of wealth with him. But what is the use? He couldn't sleep well even for a single night. On the other hand, Ravi is so poor, but he used to sleep peacefully. He widely opened his windows and dozed off at the cool breeze. Hari used to feel jealous at the happy nap of Ravi. He understood that Ravi is able to sleep as he has no wealth to disturb his mind. So he thought of an idea to spoil the sleep of Ravi. One day he took sack full of gold coins and went to Ravi. I am really sad to look at your poverty. After all, you are my friend. So I wish to help you with some amount. Take this gold and get rid of your poverty. Said Hari and placed a sack of gold coins in Ravi's hand. Ravi felt happy at the sight of gold coins. He offered his gratitude to his friend. He took the sack to his home and hid it under his mattress. But he couldn't sleep that night. He had to shut all the doors and windows tightly with the fear of thieves. Ravi was restless. At one hand, he was happy that he is now a wealthy person. On the other hand, he feared that someone could steal his wealthy away. He could not sleep even for a single second that night. The very next day, Ravi went to Hari and said, My friend, I have understood the reason for which you have given me the money. Please take away your gold. I have something that's more precious than these coins. I can't forgo my peace for your money. Saying so, Ravi returned the money and went back to his home. He has a nice sleep that day. A wolf and seven baby goats. Once upon a time, there lived a goat. One day the goat had to leave for the town. So she called her children and said, Look my dear children, I have to leave for the town now. You should be careful till I come back. Be cautious about the wolf near that tree. She is waiting for the time to eat you away. Don't open the door. Okay, mother. But how would we know that the wolf has knocked the door? Ask the kids. Very simple. The wolf has a hoarse voice and its hoofs would be black. She gave few precautions to the children and started for the town. The wolf was of course waiting for the mother goat to leave her house. She immediately rushed to the house and knocked the door. Kids, I am back home. 
Open the door quickly, said the wolf. Nah, your voice is so rough. You can't be my mother. You seem to be that bad wolf. Go away. Go from here. The wolf didn't expect such reply from baby goats. So she wandered for a while and came back to goat's house. This time she softened her voice. Kids, I am back home. It's really cold outside. Please open the door quickly. And she knocked the door. The baby goats heard the voice and thought that her mother has come back. As they were about to open the door, they saw black claws of wolves. No, your legs are black. Our mother's legs would be white. You are probably that cunning wolf. Get away from here, said the baby goats and they didn't open the door. The wolf got angry as her tricks didn't work. This time she went and rubbed some limestone on her legs. She reached the goat's house and said in the most pleasing tone, Kids, I am back home. I have brought a lot of gifts for you. Open the door quickly. The poor goats has this time believed that it was really her mother who knocked the door. And they opened the door. But alas, it was the wolf standing before them. The hungry wolf entered their home and ate all the goats. She then went to the nearby lake and slept away. The next day the mother goat came back. And what did she see? All her babies were missing. She understood that the wolf might have eaten her babies away. Mother goat began to search for that evil wolf. She found the dozing wolf nearby the lake. Mother goat could feel her babies inside the wolf's tummy. She slowly reached the sleeping wolf and said, Children, can you hear me? Come slowly out of wolf's mouth. As the baby goats heard the mother's voice, they slowly came out of the dozing wolf. The mother goat took her babies back to her house. She cautioned her kids that thereafter they should be more careful. Meanwhile, the wolf woke up and guess what? Her belly is empty. The Hare and the Tortoise There once was a speedy hare who bragged about how fast he could run. Tired of hearing him, post the tortoise, challenge him to race. All animals in the forest gathered to watch. The hare ran down the road for a while and then paused to rest. He looked back at the tortoise and cried out. How do you expect to win this race when you are walking along at your slow, slow pace? The hare stretched himself out alongside road and fell asleep, thinking, there is plenty of time to relax. The tortoise walked and walked, he never stopped until he came to the finish line. The animals who were watching cheered so loudly for tortoise that they woke up the hare. The hare stretched and began to run again. But it was too late. Tortoise had already crossed the finish line. Moral of the story. Slow and steady wins the race.
The Lion and the Mouse Once when a lion, the king of the jungle, was asleep. A little mouse began running up and down on him. This soon awakened the lion, who placed his huge paw on the mouse and opened his big jaws to swallow him. Pardon, O oh king, cried the little mouse. Forgive me this time. Forgive me. I shall never repeat it. I shall never forget your kindness. And who knows, I may be able to do you good turn one of these days. The lion was tickled by the idea of the mouse being able to help him that he lifted his paw and let him go. Sometime later, a few hunters captured the lion and tied him to a tree. After that, they went in search of a vegan to take him to the zoo. Just then, the little mouse happened to pass by. On seeing the lion's plight, he ran up to him and gnawed away the ropes that bound him. The king of the jungle, was I not right? said the little mouse, very happy to help the lion. Moral of the story. Small act of kindness will be rewarded greatly. Thirsty Crow <coughs> On a hot day, a thirsty crow fell all over the fields looking for water for a long time. She should not find any. She felt very weak, almost giving up hope. Suddenly, she saw a water jug below her. She flew straight down to see if there was any water inside. Yes, she could see some water inside the jug. The crow tried to push her head into the jug. Sadly, she found that the neck of the jug was too narrow. The crow thought hard for a while. Then looking around her, she saw some pebbles. She suddenly had a good idea. She started picking up pebbles one by one, dropping each into the jug. As more and more pebbles filled the jug, the water level kept rising. Soon it was high enough for the crow to drink. Her plan had worked. If you try hard enough, you may soon find the answer to your problem. The Hungry Fox Who Caught in the Tree Trunk Once upon a time, there was a hungry fox that was looking for something to eat. He was very hungry. No matter how hard he tried, the fox could not find food. Finally, he went to the edge of the forest and searched there for food. Suddenly, he caught sight of a big tree with a hole in it. Inside the hole, there was a package. The hungry fox immediately thought that there might be food inside and became very happy. He jumped into the hole. When he opened the package, he saw slices of bread, meat and fruit in it. An old woodcutter had placed the food in the tree trunk before he began to cut down the trees in the forest. The fox happily began to eat and he finished eating. He felt thirsty and decided to leave the hole and drink some water from nearby spring. However, no matter how hard he tried, he could not get out of the hole. Do you know why? 
Yes, the fox had eaten so much food that he became too big to fit through the hole. The fox was very sad and upset. He told himself, I wish I thought a little before jumping into the hole. Yes, children, this is the result of doing something without thinking about it first. <laughs>